Welcome back to the flagship studio here at the J.P. Morgan Healthcare Conference in 2025. I am joined by Brian Alexander, the new CEO of Valo Health. Brian, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. It's a really exciting time. Great. We were just chatting before we turned on the cameras about your career as a radiation oncologist training at Penn. And then from there, you went into big data. And now you've recently joined us as CEO and also CEO partner of Flagship. Why? Why this move for you and your career, and, and what drew you to the opportunity at Valo Health? Yeah, Lindy, thanks. It's a tremendously exciting time, really, in the history of medicine, um, when the availability of data um, at scale has been, uh, you know, is astronomical. So in the history of medicine, we've learned a lot from observing patients and applying those learnings to um, the next patient. Um, the problem is that that's taken a really long time, um, and, and discoveries come very slowly. So with the availability of data and the analytic tools that we have today, um, I've spent my entire career thinking about how do we uh, you know, imagine the world of medicine in a new way given these opportunities. So uh, when I was an academic, I thought a lot about medical decision making and how we apply data to make decisions. And I continued that in industry when I was the CEO of Foundation Medicine. I've used uh, information to do clinical trials differently. I started a company called Global Coalition for Adaptive Research to do trials in different ways. Um, and that was another area of academic focus. And to me, Valo is just the epitome of you know, leveraging these new analytic techniques and the availability of data to really think about how you do drug development in a new way. That's really exciting. And does that lens then bring with it a view of how you're going to do clinical trials with Valo? So I think the exciting thing about Valo is it really leverages this idea that we can learn from observing patients. Um, if I think about some observations in the past that have led to different therapies, um, I think about uh, scurvy. Uh, scurvy was <laughs> the, the major limitation to exploration in the, the 1600s, 1700s, um, and it was an observation that people that were that ate oranges didn't get scurvy. Yeah. Now, it's not oranges that cure it's vitamin C, it's part of oranges. But that observation, you know, took place over hundreds of years and millions of people died. Um, because of the availability of these patient observations, like how much you could measure about a patient and how many patients you could like really like learn from was very limited. Um, but now we have access to mil tens of millions of patient data over tens of 20 years. And so how can you learn about that from that in different ways? So this is where we leverage things like artificial intelligence to notice patterns in this like high dimensionality of data to understand things about disease which we might not by not being able to observe the patients or not having these analytic tools. So um, Valo really looks at how can we understand disease in a different way by observing patient data um, and human data at the core of everything, finds new targets, mm -hmm. validates those targets in human models, and then develops small molecules against the, those targets with, the again, the assistance of artificial intelligence enabling the humans. That's really neat. Yeah. And we're only about two weeks into the new year, and you already have some great momentum heading into 2025 with an expanded partnership with Novo Nordisk. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, this is a tremendously exciting partnership for us um, for probably three reasons. Um, one is it leverages all those things I just said about the Opal computational platform, um, identifying targets in real-world patient data, validating those targets in uh, human preclinical models, and then using artificial intelligence in humans, like interacting with each other, to um, imagine small molecule developments in different ways so that we can imagine any possible small molecule that could exist, uh, find the right one for the thing that we're trying to do, and, and really rapidly develop drugs against these new targets. So our partnership with um, Novo Nordisk is really exciting because we really are able to leverage all those areas across the spectrum and then work with uh, a, you know, a world-class organization developing drugs for cardiometabolic diseases to like take that and bring them to mm -hmm. patients around the globe. Fantastic. The second, yep. was, I was just going to say, the second reason we're really excited about it is we talk about human-enabled artificial intelligence. And um, the way that we work internally, the ways of working have changed. Like this technology is, you can't just have, like, have a new technology like artificial intelligence and just solves problems. You need to imagine new ways of working. And so we've worked really hard within Valo to say, how do, how do these new tools make us work differently together internally? and now externally with a partner to make like drug development seamless. So we've been able to do that over the l last year. And then finally, the, the, the third reason we're really excited about the partnership is um, because we started this partnership in September 2023 and are so f quickly expanding it to um, type 2 diabetes and obesity, it's a validation of both those things, the platform and the ways of working. Absolutely. Um, so what's in store for 2025 then? What are your priorities coming in as a new CEO? So focus. I mean, I, I think that we have this great opportunity ahead of us um, with 
with respect to the Novo Nordisk partnership, it shows that our kind of platform is relatively therapeutic area agnostic. We started with cardiovascular disease, got the ways of working down, got the targets into their pipeline and, and we're developing. Now we're gonna move to type two diabetes and um, obesity with Novo Nordisk. So really kind of executing on that, learnings from the first uh, few programs up to the 20 programs we're gonna develop with them and really kind of keeping this like platform becoming more efficient, our ways of working more efficient. And then finally, thinking about ways to extend our, the ways of working in our platform to other disease areas. Um, so we think about neurodegenerative disease or oncology or other places where we might find partners that want to work with us in the same ways we're working with Novo Nordisk. Really interesting. So a, a patient focus to creating a new way to think about drug discovery and development. Absolutely. Really interesting. Brian, thanks for explaining that to us. Appreciate you being here. Thank you. Really appreciate you having me.